There's a lot of mobile boards to choose from, almost too many, and it can get confusing, like for example, the MSI X670E Gaming Plus Wi-Fi can be all yours right now for just $280, which just so happens to be the same price as the already pretty great value MSI Mag X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi, which we covered on this very channel before. So what exactly makes the Gaming Plus stand out at this price point? Well, we're starting off with CPU power, here we have 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, rated at a maximum of 80 amps, which is identical to the Tomahawk. And while sure you can definitely get more balls that cost less with better power delivery, it's still more than enough for most people, especially when combined with two full 8 pins for CPU power. And unless you're doing some crazy overclocking, you really don't need much else. And pretty much the same thing can be said for the PC expansion, which is more than fine for most people with a primary PC Gen 5 slot, two additional 16x slots which are actually Gen 3x1 and Gen 4x4, plus a tiny little 1x Gen 3 slot to round things off. And storage wise it's also more than enough for most people with 4 and not 2 slots in total, with the primary being Gen 5 and the additional 3 all being Gen 4, plus 4 set of connectors which I'm still kind of mad that 4 set of connectors has become the norm, but still, for most sensible people, that's more than enough storage. And finally, we get to the rear IO, and whoa, would you look at that. Man, as sad as it may be, I don't think there's anything that brings me more joy in life than seeing a mobile board with that many USB ports. Yeah, that's right, with this mobile board, you get a whopping 11 USB Type A ports, which completely obliterates MSI's Tomahawk at the same price point. This amount of USB ports only really being rivaled by Gigabyte. Though, however, there are some compromises. For example, in the Tomahawk from MSI, you do get two USB Type C ports, a 20 gig and a 10 gig, while here you just get a single USB 20 gig one. You also get both integrated DisplayPort and HDMI, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, and unfortunately only three audio jacks, though I guess it makes sense they had to, you know, make some room for all those USB ports. However, the issues with the audio don't end there, because it's also running of the ALC A97 codec, which is, well, pretty basic at this point, and it is a very noticeable difference in audio quality compared to the ALC 1020 used by the X670 Tomahawk Wi-Fi and many similar motherboards at this price point. So for the exact same price right now, which one is better? Or should you just go for something else in general and avoid MSI like a plague? Well, it, it well, it's a very complicated question to answer because while well, you win some, you lose some with this motherboard, and while some things it does great, others it does well a lot worse. And the aesthetic itself can also be very divisive because it goes for a more silvery slash white look, which may not fit with all builds, compared to the more universal yet more arguably bland Tomahawk, which doesn't even have any RGB. So if this motherboard tickles your fancy, then the links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below. And whilst they're here, maybe also check out our Patreon because just one dollar that's one to eightieth of the price of this mood board will get you absolutely amazing perks. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Elephroniac, Bala Shroka, and a pseudonym, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lensby, and Level Up. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye. <laughs>